Okay. All right, so thank you everyone for um, joining me here today. Um, I want to start sharing my screen with you. And I hope it works this time without any problems. Okay. There we are. Oh, one second. I wait a second. It's always the tricky part to get the presentation going, but I hope this will work now. Uh. Here, share the screen. Um, Everyone turned off the microphones. I want to do that. Okay, good. I think, yeah, now it should work. Okay. Sorry. Present. Present. All right, one more time, ladies. Sorry. Oh, goodness. Um, okay, so, all right. No, still not. Okay, I'll do it in minute form. Can you see my um, multiple exposure um, presentation on your screen now? No? No, it's a blank page. Uh, I don't know. On my end. Try I don't know. I tried that yesterday and it worked. So I don't see why it's not working now. This is so confusing. Okay, let me try one more time. Do you see it now? Yes. Yay. Okay. All right, everyone. So here we go. Um, February is the month of multiple exposure photography. Um, I'm really excited about this topic. Um, it's one of my favorite creative photography techniques. Um, I started um, diving into multiple exposure photography about three years ago. Um, and in the beginning, I found it a little uh, confusing, but I quickly um, discovered it's, it's a great um, method um, to unleash your creativity. Um, I, so um, most of you probably know me now a little bit via the Facebook group. If you join the meeting late, do me a favor and mute yourself. That would be super helpful. We will have a um, uh, Q&A section at the end of this meeting. But for now, please um, mute yourself. So um, I started my photography journey in 2012. Um, I was born and raised in Germany, but I live in um, Los Angeles, Southern California. Um, I uh, would say like eight years into my journey as a photographer, I discovered Lens Baby and that opened a whole new world for me because I was always looking for um, a more creative way of, be, of expressing myself, but I found that really hard. And then with Lens Baby, all of a sudden was these specialty lenses and then later on the Omni ones that was like the world that I was always looking for. Um, and then I eventually um, started portraying um, the landscape around me and that became my passion and is probably what, what you know most about my work. So that's a little bit about me, um, but I want to talk about um, double exposure photography in this meeting for our February challenge. As I said, I'm super excited that we get to do this because I feel multiple exposure photography is um, such a great way to try things, um, to lose control over your photography, and it can unleash um, like this immense uh, creative process. Um, and as I said, I have practiced it for the last three years, and I found out on um, quite a few few things about double exposure or the multiple exposure photography. So first, when I started, I thought it's like two images that you blend um, in one image and that's basically it. But then I later found out, oh, you can do so much more. You can uh, with certain cameras do up to nine images um, in camera, but of course you can also use um, Photoshop to um, do the multiple, uh, put multiple exposures together. Um, you can even use um, an app on your phone if you don't have the function on your camera. Um, so that's that's uh, quite helpful. And let me switch the slide here. 
Um, so what I love about this technique is that it is so simple. You need your camera and most cameras have the, have a dial that you can switch like on my Fuji, it's, uh, it's the wheel that I turn. And then on my Canon, I go into the menu. If you don't know how to use the multiple exposure function on your camera, I recommend that you look it up online um, or refer to your manual. Um, it is, it is um, a simple process. Just punch in the name of your um, camera, the model and multiple exposure and the manual will come up and you will figure out how to do that. If you find out sadly your camera doesn't have that um, feature, then I suggest that you start looking into uh, Photoshop, how to do that in Photoshop or do it on your phone, which is also a lot of fun. I use an app, it's called Blend Editor for my double exposures when I want to do that um, on my phone. Um, if you have specific questions, like I said, refer back to your manual. This, this information here is, um, so we will cover a few of the uh, technical um, questions, but I will also go into the creative aspect of that. All right, that being said, let's dive in. So the first thing you do, of course, is set your camera to double exposure. And if you're new to double exposure photography, I recommend that you start playing with that. Just start with, with um, getting used to the idea of having to overlay two images. Um, in the beginning, that can be a little confusing, um, but I think you will quickly figure out, oh, this is a genre that I like, and that's, or maybe even start with, with images that you have seen in the past, where um, for me, it was very intriguing, those pictures of silhouettes of um, hats, and then on overlay of a tree or plants. This is what intrigued me in the beginning. And then once you become a little more familiar with, with the, um, how the double exposure works on your camera, you will probably also quickly find out what your favorite subject is and then just start, uh, continue working with that. Good, so this is the technical part. I want to dive into it because uh, when I mentor, this comes up um, quite often, the question, so when you, and this is specific to um, Canyon because I, uh, Canon, because I shoot Canon, so I, I don't know too much about the Nikon menu, but I am sure it is pretty similar. Um, so when you shoot Canon, you have these two options. There's the function control, and then there's the continuous shooting when you access the multiple exposure menu. Um, the function control is what I use because it saves the single image and then it overlays the image and it allows you in camera to see the first image as an overlay on the second image. So you basically see in camera what you create. If you prefer to shoot multiple images in a quick succession, then you probably want to choose the continuous um, shooting. Um, because it allows you uh, to shoot a rapid se sequence of up to nine images, but it does not um, save the source images. So the original image is gone. In the end, you have the, the um, multiple exposure. But um, like I said before, if, if this is your first time um, hearing about multiple exposures, this can be confusing. Um, don't worry about it too much. Just put your camera in function control and start shooting. That's a safe uh, safe way to start. And then just keep in mind that there is this continuous shooting mode and that you can change that later on. But I wouldn't worry too much about it right now. And then another thing that comes up when you look at your Canon, and like I said, with other cameras, this is similar. It might have a little different name. Nice. You have these um, different exposure modes. Um, so there is the additive exposure mode which basically, um, like in film photography, takes the individual exposure and overlays the exposures and leads to an overexposed image. Um, that is useful in certain yeah. cases. Um, what I personally prefer is the average mode because it, it includes an automatic exposure control so you don't get an overexposed image. If you shoot, on the other hand, an additive, you need to underexpose your image to make up for um, the fact that each image um, on top of each other would lead to an overexposed image. So average is a good um, starting point. And then later on, you can play with the other modes. There's also um, the comparative mode and that comes in two settings. There is comparative bright and then there is comparative dark. The comparative bright is suitable for photographing uniformly dark scenes with bright objects superimposed on top. 
and the comparative dark, thus the opposite eliminates bright areas of images and so overlay only the dark areas of each image. And there's an, as an example, um, this might work um, if you wanna get rid of reflections or stuff. Um, but again, um, don't get too carried away about these technical things. I just bring it up because it's a question that keeps com coming up again and again when I um, mentor students. Um, so I want you to be able to, be, to refer back to this and um, know about the technical things. All right. And with that, we've covered the techniques, the not so fun part. Um, what I love about um, uh, multiple exposures is the freedom to create. And this is why I picked it as a topic um, because I was really blown away by the results of our slow shutter January topic. Um, there was so much beauty, so many amazing images. Um, I'm grateful for this group. I'm grateful for the inspiration. Uh, it was fantastic. So I see multiple exposure as an extension to um, social shutter photography. Um, everything you've learned, everything you've discovered last month, you can integrate into multiple exposure photography. Um, so this image here in the background is actually a good example um, of how you could make or how you can use multiple exposures um, in a creative way. So what I did when I um, first learned about multiple exposures, I just took one image and then I turned around, I took the second image and okay, that was that. But that got uh, quickly boring and then I um, started mixing techniques and this is where I feel um, multiple exposure photography really shines. Um, so a simple example is like this bird, even though it's not that visible right now, is, is in focus, but the birds here are out of focus. You might play with um, different apertures, you could play with different um, shutter speeds, um, you can play with different techniques. Let's say you want to continue with the slow shutter photography that we practiced in January, you could take one image that is slow shutter and another one that is fast. Um, I have an image in here. No, I, I, oh, this one is actually a good example. So this is about the multiple exposure, the bird is in focus, that was the first image. Um, and then the second one the overlay that you see here is actually not a cloud, but it's the ocean. So it was after taking the first image, I was um, turning my camera down and took a slow shutter image of the ocean that was right at my feet. And you see, I even moved my camera a little bit. This is what the blur is. Um, so stuff like that is something that I find um, super, super interesting. And I am having so much fun in doing that. Um, another thing that I like about double exposure or multiple exposure photography is that you can um, mix things that are unexpected and you can create um, moods with it. Um, so here, for example, I first took the image of the birds in the sky and then I turned my camera down to, and I just pictured this woman and it looks so dreamy. Um, but when I, the, the scene actually didn't look that dreamy, you know, it wasn't foggy. It's just the way um, these two images add together. Or here I was, um, I think, I used three different techniques. So the first image that I took for this one was the sharp um, picture of the pier. And then I took a second image um, where I opened my aperture to 2.8. And so the lights that you see on the pier here are now out of focus and I just overlaid it. And I think I even added an omni filter for the um, stretched lines here. So as you see, the, the opportunities are in set. In this um, image, um, I, I uh, mixed also two techniques or three even. So the first one is the sharp image of the beach. And then the second one, the overlay here, the colors, um, that is intentional camera movement and slow shutter. And I think even a foil, an omni foil. And the reason I started doing that was um, this scene here of the of the little family and the kids being happy and running towards the water is something I see very often when I'm at the beach. Um, and I felt like after trying different angles and um, everything, I, I mostly go to the same beach. I was like, man, I, I, I don't know how to come up with um, uh, new perspectives. And then I started new techniques because I realized I might have to deal with the same landscape every day, but there are ways of making it look um, different. 
Um, another thing that I like to do when I use double um, or multiple exposure photography is to look at the same um, uh, same landscape, same same location, but use different um, apertures. So this um, image here, so that's the base image that was the lifeguard tower. Um, it appears in many of my images, but I needed to find a new way of portraying it. So here I added on the side, I added the foil. Um, and then the second image, I uh, this is the sun actually, um, and I was using my 18 millimeter lens. So normally it would be like tiny, tiny, a tiny circle, but I was um, opening my shutter. I turned my manual, my, my autofocus off. Um, and then I focused on something that was nearby. I left it there. So it was out of focus and I added the foil and this is how the sun then all of a sudden looked so big and could almost be a moon. Um, this is a very similar technique. Um, so I took a picture of the reflection of the people here in the water. And then I took a second image of the same location, but this time out of focus. So the first time I just focused on the legs and the water, and this is why you see the structure. But the second time, um, the direction of the sun is here. So I think we see the actual sunset up here, and this is the reflection in the water. Um, if you open your shutter all the way up, um, you get that. And I just overlaid it. Um, and what I love is when I do it in camera instead of Photoshop is I don't really think about it. You know, when I start doing these things at the computer, it's a whole different process for me. Then I'm back at um, thinking about rules and thinking about composition and thinking about right and wrong. And I feel a little more restricted. When I do all this in camera, I'm really there. I'm at the location. I, I just marvel at the beauty. And um, I, I, it's it's basically like a play, like a dance. And I, I just love that. And this is why I personally, even though I know a lot of people get great results when doing that in Photoshop, and, and I have a lot of respect for that, but um, I don't enjoy the editing process so much. I really enjoy the shooting process. And that's when my creative juices start flowing, when when I'm actually working with the camera. That's, that's for me the fun part. The whole editing later on is not so much fun. This is why you will rarely ever um, see me doing an editing video. <clears throat> Okay, technical tips. Um, oh yeah, that is um, also interesting. Um, when I got my R5, I found out that they, I'm not sure if it's an added feature or if it's been be there before and I just wasn't aware of it. Um, so most cameras, my Fuji, I can take one image in multiple exposure mode and then I add the second one. But on my Canon, I can go in the menu, can choose any image on my camera roll and over and, and choose that as my base image and add the second image. So you, you get to choose which is your um, base image. And I really love that. Um, yeah, I've talked a little bit about that already that I just love about um, multiple um, exposure photography. I kind of lose myself in the creative process. It's a little bit like um, if you're an artsy person and you like your arts and crafts and you have like uh, papers and, and pens and brushes and colors on a table and you start working without a concept. Let's say, you know, you want to create a bird, but you don't know do you, if you want to paint it or if you want to um, draw it, if you want to um, build a bird. Um, that's the same for me when I do the multiple exposures at the beach. Um, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the book Livingston Seagull by um, Richard Bach. It's a book that um, I read when I was a child and I find that interesting to go back um, in, in my memory and to remember how touched I felt by the images. It was a picture book and the story. And um, I also love this quote a lot. Don't believe what your eyes are telling you. All they show is limitation. Look with your understanding. Find out what you already know and you will see the way to fly. Um, this is how I feel about um, multiple exposure photography and creative photography, that it connects you with how you feel in that moment and what you see in the moment instead of wanting to, or maybe just replicating something that is there. Um, that's what I, how I felt about my own photography during the first 
five, six years, I, I was like, man, this is the perfect replication, but there must be more. How do I um, get to the point where I can create images that transmit that, um, that idea, that feeling, you know, this feeling of being in the moment, the, the freedom of this bird flying. Um, and if you're curious about the uh, creative process of this image, um, by now you probably um, understand how I did that. So this is the first image, the bird flying, and then I turned down. And what you see here is the sparkles um, on the water. Um, it was around sunset, um, camera is wide open, and that was my overlay. And with that, I am coming to the end of my presentation. Um, I wanted to let you know, share with you, um, if you want to buy any LensBaby products, feel free to use my coupon code. I am not only a photographer, I'm also a LensBaby ambassador. So this is my coupon code if you're interested. Also, if you have questions, um, send me an email, contact me via uh, Instagram. Um, I'm here to answer your questions. And with that, I will um, finish the official part my, of my presentation and stop the screen share and go back and talk to you guys and um, open the whole um, session up to questions. So please feel free. I have one. Yes, please. Um, so you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, um, no sorry. Uh, so. Um, when you do your doubles in camera, do you generally do um, two images that are are back to back, or do you save different light images? And I ask because I find it because I'll shoot a lot, like especially if I'm shooting wildlife and interspersing it with lens baby and other things. Mm -hmm. But um, if I'm shooting, like oh, that would be really nice light to layer on something, and then I've shot you know a hundred pictures before and after. It's really, I don't have a scrolly thing on my Nikon the same way. It's really hard to find those. So I find it kind of frustrating, which is why I tend to do more in post than, um, than in camera. Okay. Does that make sense what I asked? Yeah, 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 I get it. Yeah. Um, so I typically uh, shoot my images in succession. So I shoot the first mm -hmm. one and then I just keep playing with it. What I do is if the second one doesn't look right, I just delete it and then I add another one. You know, maybe I want to take a picture of birds in flight and the first one, the birds were still pretty far away and they are too small. And now I realize, oh, they are coming my way. So then I would um, change the exposure. Um, another thing that I can do, and I'm not sure if you could do that, but I find that helpful. Um, erase your memory card at home and then pick the images that you feel have potential for a multiple exposure. Put those images on your memory card. So let's say those are five or 10 images that you like, and then have just these images on the um, memory card. And then when you go to the location, you can go back to these images. Then you don't have the entire camera roll of 300 images or something. Okay. So it's, what, what, yeah, I see, I see what, I see the advantage of what you see Beth um, from a planning standpoint. And I think it's a little bit um, about um the personality that you have i i'm not such a good planner um i'm a very intuitive and um spontaneous person so um as soon as i start thinking my work becomes very rigid so this is why i rarely ever bring images i rarely ever come with a plan um but i know my daughter on the other hand loves to plan and she's always like i don't know what you're doing there um why don't you do this so i think um to plan that and to come with some images might be also a very good approach yeah for me it's not so much the plan i guess it's sort of planning but like i'm i go the other day i went to shoot owls right so my main thing i'm after is owls but you know mm -hmm. they're not flying back and forth every second so it's like oh you know there goes an owl shoot 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 and then you know oh no owls well i'll shoot the oh the light's really pretty over there or i'll try you know taking a picture of this out of focus or whatever oh here comes the owl you know shoot so it's kind of like that so it's not super planned, but then if I'm, if I then want to get, you know, where was that out of focus sun that was so pretty that would be layered on something, it, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'd be spending all my time scrolling through trying to find it as opposed to shooting. And the owl is gone, <laughs> right? And the, yeah. the light and everything else. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In that case, it's probably a very good idea to bring the image home, take the image of the owl instead, and then work on those later at home. Definitely. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yes. 
Okay. Something that I learned um, when taking several images, like to photo stack, is to put your hand in front of oh, the yeah. camera and shoot your, shoot your hand. So that when you see your hand or you see the bush or whatever you decide to take a picture of that doesn't make There's any sense, you know that before yeah. or after two is the picture that, you, that you're saving. Image to line art in Photoshop faster and easier than the um, line of drawing everything. One second, um, someone needs to turn up the, hello? Results using uh, the free line art action from Photoshop Supply. Cynthia, Open can you, can you turn up your... Yeah, the link from where you... Cynthia, can you turn off your um, microphone, please? I was wild. I, I couldn't, I couldn't um, do it. Sorry about that, Leticia. I wanted to hear what you said. So could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Okay. Let's say you're taking, um, okay, a double exposure, right? Mm -hmm. But um, so you could take a picture of your hand as just an image. And then the next two or three are your is what you're going to use for your double exposure. At the end of that, you can shoot another picture of your hand so that you know that that series is what you want to blend. You can do the same oh. thing with for that special background is like take the picture of the background and then shoot your hand. And you know that before oh, your hand yeah. is the picture that you want to use instead of uh, having to go through everything. Yes, I, I hear what you say. So you like a think? visual marker. So a visual know, marker, okay. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. Some people do that also when they use um, lens baby lenses because yes. the metadata doesn't um, show. It will never tell you um, that you use the, let's say, Velvet 28 um, when you go to Lightroom. So that's pretty annoying. And the way it's a good way to get around that problem, take a picture of the, um, uh, of the lens before you mm -hmm. actually attach it to your camera. And that way you remember, oh, this is where I started shooting the lens, uh, the Edge 80 or the Velvet or whatever it is. Yeah. Good tip. Thank you for sharing, Leticia. So um, any more questions or ideas, suggestions? Um, yeah. Yes, I was interested. Um, when you um, photograph, it gets a lovely clear blue sky and then individual birds, you know, they work so well. Um, but I'm interested, in, people do get lovely double exposures with more complicated images but i find it very mm -hmm. hard to to work out what will work in advance you know for example yeah um I, they're very subtle lots of leaves in the background something in a woodland or, or, or you know flowers or something but i always find it it's so strong that it, it just kills the picture i don't know how to really combine yeah i i i hear what you say christine i think um a, it's experience, just keep practicing. Um, and I think you're already way into your journey because you are clear about the subject and what interests you and you already see what is problematic. So double exposure photography, multiple exposure photography is a big field and it, it has a big um, learning curve. It's nothing where people are good at overnight. And I think um, if photographers are really honest, they will also admit that they shoot a lot of double exposures that just didn't work. You know, that's also part of it. Um, in your case, I would recommend try to play with um, aperture, for example, see if that helps. If you have a very strong background and the lines are too harsh, maybe it works better when you um, try to uh, work with a less focused image. Stuff like that could help. Um, what else? Um, just keep practicing, honestly. Mm -hmm. And and also, um, I started with these more complicated images, and then at one point I realized I just don't like it, you know. And then I mm. figured out, okay, how can I get a more like a cleaner exposure? Um, and I tried that, and I think Perfect, that's puppy. another. I gotta work. <laughs> Sorry, who was that? I think that's Amy. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure if that helped, Christine. I. I hope so. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yes. Yeah, so just keep trying it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, keep trying it. I mean, I always think that the most important part about these creative techniques is you must somehow enjoy the process. There must be something where you feel like there's a spark. There's like a. Um, something needs to feel right or good about it if if this is really way out of your comfort zone don't do it 
But mm -hmm. um, if 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 there is like a tiny spark, um, I think that will most likely turn into a fire. But it takes time. Um, for me, I mean, these images that I'm presenting here, I, I went to that beach for at least two years without seeing anything that I liked. And then eventually I got into this mood and it was like coming to me. So this is why I keep comparing it with dance um, because it's it's the same thing. You know, it's mm -hmm. like all of a sudden you start feeling, um, seeing the images in advance because now you've practiced for such a long time. Um, and it also goes the other way around. Um, I used to bring my camera everywhere. I used to shoot everything. And now I'm like, if I go shopping, I don't need my camera. If I go out with my family, I certainly don't need my family be um, because I will never get in that mindset. Um, but it takes time. Um, I think that's also the beautiful part about it to um, give yourself that time to um, develop that desire, that passion. Um, if you can look at it as a journey, then it's a lot more fun. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Um, so I also shoot with a Canon. I have the RP, not the R5. So I don't have as many features as you do. But mm -hmm. One of the ones that I do have is the average for, I can do average or additive when I'm choosing exposures. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm I, that's where I'm struggling with um, the most is in choosing um, exposures that sometimes one of my images is too dark and the other one is too exposed and it kind of ruins the image and they don't, I don't see them clearly enough when I look at them on the computer. I can't separate them like you can in yours. Mine are fused. Once they're fused, they're fused. Yeah. Um, so any advice on how to adjust exposure between each one? Um, because when I'm looking through to take the second image, I'm seeing it superimposed on the other one. It looks like it's good there, but when I get out, it's not. Hmm. Um, I would have to go back to my own presentation, honestly, because I always struggle with the names of the modes. And then I can tell you which one I use. So um, I use the one that average. I use average. Yeah, that's, the one, that's the one I'm using. Yes. And it works for me. So I wonder what the problem could be. I, I don't even mess much with it. So I, I use the um, right exposure when I shoot. And then I what I do is I take a test shot before I um, actually do the double exposure. So I look at the environment. Is this kind of on the dark side, kind of on the bright side? So I might overexpose or underexpose. Um, but then the camera does the rest for me. I don't mess much with the with the files. Do you change the, your exposure setting for your second image or do you keep the same exposure setting? No, I, I, I mostly change it. It's like a whole different story, the second image. I okay. rarely, rarely use the same one. I mean, I rarely look in the same direction twice. I, I rarely shoot the second image um, as at the same setting. It's really like I'm adding a playful um, edition of what I have seen the first time, you know, it's like, okay, so this is the image. I like it, but I think it's kind of boring. What else can I do with it? Can I add some sparkles? Can I add some light leaks? Can I, um, turn the perspective upside down? Um, how, how does this look when I look the other way around? Um, so for me, it's like a creative exercise. Does that make sense? Does it help? No, it doesn't help, but it, but, but it, it does make sense. But I, don't think it, I don't think it's, I'm going to have to keep playing. Um, yes. Yeah. So what I'm struggling with is, so after I've taken the first image, and so I have that like ghost image that appears on my, in my viewfinder now, and I'm looking at the other one, is how to properly expose that second image. That's where I'd like some tips, if you've got any. So for me, the way it works on my camera, I just set the exposure right. Um, and like I said, sometimes, I mean, that's also experience. Sometimes I know the, the zero on the exposure meter is not the exposure that I need. So oh. I don't really know how to explain that. Um, it's, it's like taking one image. If you look oh. into a sunset and you want to see the sky, you know you have to exposed for the sky and will lose details in the landscape. If you want the image of the landscape, now you have to adjust the exposure for the landscape, but you will lose the sky. Um, I do the same for these images and that's it. So if, does that help? Okay, I'll keep trying, thank you. Okay, <laughs> all right. 
um, any more questions? Or does anyone want to give tips? Um, do you guys- You're muted, what? Helena. Hi. Um, Ute, I have a question for you. So do you do uh, double exposures in Photoshop sometimes or is mainly in camera? Mainly in camera, I would say 99.9% .9 in camera. I really, the only time I use Photoshop for double exposures is honestly, if I mentor someone and that person has a question, that's it. I, I do it for other people, but I don't like the process. Um, I write a lot for my photography, um, for my blog and everything and articles. So I spend quite a bit of time on my computer and I really don't enjoy the editing. So I'm honest with you guys. I mostly use um, presets and that's it. I don't do a lot of manual editing. Um, and with that, I, I would say I hardly ever use Photoshop maybe if i want to get rid of something where i know okay that's an easy job i can do it um but that's it okay thank you you're welcome anyone else any more questions or do you guys do um double exposures multiple exposures do you have other experiences is there any anybody who wants to share something i just um, have a i was okay. sorry you can go first Oh, um, just a question. I, I haven't really played with the um, double exposure in my camera, but when you take the two images, um, is that like a final, you can, like, how do you get it placed the way you want it, one on top of the other when it comes together? There is no easy answer to your question because A, each camera treats that process differently. So the way it works on my Canon R5, um, I take the first image and then I see it in camera while I'm moving around as an overlay over what I see through the viewfinder. And that really is helpful because now I basically know, let's say I have a tree and I have a person. Um, okay. I want to make sure that both of these individual um, objects in the image are visible. So instead of maybe overlaying the tree on the person and you don't see the person anymore, um, I see that in camera and, and the, the, the overlay keeps moving over the landscape, if that helps. Yeah, um, yeah I think on the so. Other, I have, to, I, I have to, to play with I haven't really played with it much, but I see what you yes. mean, yeah. Yeah, is so that, when is I- that, Oh, sorry. Yeah? No, is go that ahead. A, a Nikon? I mean, a, a, a uh, Canon function. I'm not. I've at least with my D850. I haven't, but I, I also have a, a Xena. I, I didn't. Yes. I've never noticed being able to do that. So it was always that's the other reason for doing more things in post because you you couldn't be seeing what how where it's going to overlay. So is that yes. Canon specific? Yes. So I know it's on my. It's available on my Canon R5. Um, it is on I the also, RP also. So the, the RP is the lesser model one. It does that. The only thing mm -hmm. that I don't have is I don't, I can't split them afterwards. Uh, that mine just stay fused. I don't have as many functions, but I can see the overlay. Are there I any have, Nik Nikon shooters that are listening yeah, right my, now that know if you can do it there? My Z6 does where it has the overlay and I can see it. I have okay. both the Z7 II and the Z9 and they both have that option. Once I take the first double exposure that I can take it and place it wherever I want to place wow. it. It's a okay, mirrorless this, function. Okay, well that's-, that's so If you've got those cameras, you can do it. I just, I mean, I got a Z9 a year ago, but I, I don't use it as, I usually keep my lens babies on my um, on my 850 and, and, like a, and then I just shoot long with my um, Z9. So that's- Girl, like, what are you waiting for? Uh, well, I'll be doing that this afternoon, so thanks. <laughs> and it's by like the magic, way, that camera. <laughs> Yeah, yes. thanks. I didn't and, know that. I did that. So thanks. And there's one one more tip for all the lens baby shooters here. If mm -hmm. you shoot the Canon R5 like I do, there is the option that you choose any image on your memory card as a background image for the multiple exposure. Yeah. But you cannot do that when you use a lens baby lens. It only works with the native Canon native lenses. Just a tip. If you use if you use uh, lens baby lens, you can only use the last image on your camera roll. You cannot go back. Interesting. I don't think we can do that in Nike with Nikon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions or? Utah, I was we... just going to ask. Um, yeah, I've played a little 
not very much at all with double exposures. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm working mostly with film these days, so I don't get the opportunity to see what I'm doing. <laughs> but um, do you have any tips on, like, I know you're sort of needing to, do you, do you think through a lot when you're doing your work? As in, do you, or does it come naturally now that you've done it so often? Yeah, because for me, I find it yeah. really difficult to... Okay look at this scene and then look at this scene and go, yeah, they'll blend really well together. So I just find it, I, I think from what I get from you, it's just a matter of practice and yes, time and to put in. I think, I think it really is practice because you need to learn seeing that way. And I think for you, it could be really beneficial to start doing it on a digital camera because yeah. that's how you learn the process. And yeah. then once you're a little more familiar with it, do it on film, because I think it would be very hard to do the same on film without having the experience if yeah. I had to do it. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait to see the images. Mm -hmm. Hi. Okay. Um, yep. I was, yeah, I have one more thing. With me, I don't do everything in camera or Photoshop. I just edit my images and then I use a, um, the app that's uh, it's called the blend photo editor mm -hmm. I just go in there and use that is tinker around see which photos work together mm -hmm. and that's how I come up with mine I do have the option of doing it in camera but I don't have the live view so I don't like that feature <laughs> yeah I understand that that would probably be a little bit more difficult yeah it's a good point yeah I do that too I use the blend editor too and I think that's a good app I think it's even free so always very little money yes it is free yeah, yeah. so um if you want to share that in the chat so other people can download the app that would be great Thank you. all right guys I think with that we are coming to an end um, I can't wait to see your images. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today and um, for participating in the group and for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, your creativity. Um, I love it. And um, I hope you all have a great weekend and a great month ahead and keep shooting. I thank have you. just one more thing. Um, yes. I requested to join the loop group and I've not been added into it. Is it possible to join in or is it full? Oh, no, no, no. I will add you. Sorry, I might have missed you. That's Therese, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I'll do that right after the meeting. Sorry about that, Therese. Not a problem. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Uh, you too? Yes. I, I would love to be added to the loop group as well. I requested, but I may have been a little bit late to the party. Barbara. This is Barbara. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you both give me Barbara. quickly your Instagram handles, please? I'm mine, uh, mine is Therese. Barbara underscore... Yes. Connard, C O N A R D. Yep. All mine right. Is, mine is Therese Takes Pictures. Okay. Me too, please. <laughs> Ditto. Ins okay. I need the Instagram handles, please. Um, at uh, This Wild Hope. And there's an E at Wild at the end of Wild. This Wild Hope. Okay. And yes. Dr. D R Marm Images. And I Lara. just joined. I know, Yay. I'm so excited. Okay, and I heard cool. Nat. Hi, guys. Great to be with you all. Amazing. Okay. I will add you to the um, Thank you. loop, of course. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what will be created this month. Great. Okay, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. You.